Hey, you four people. Hmm. So yeah, can you take can you take the question again? Right. On January first, twenty twenty one. Bio Limited had 10 million ordinary shares in issue. On 31st March 2021, the company issued at full market price 2 million ordinary shares. On 31st August 2021, the company made a right issue of 1 for 5 shares at 3 CDs. The fair value of the shares on the last day before the issue of the right issue was 3 CDs, 80 pesos. Profit for the current period is 3.5 million cities. The reported earnings per share for the year ended 31st December 2020 was 33 pesos required. Calculate the earnings per share for the year ended December 31st 2021 and the restated earnings per share for the year ended December 31, 2020. Okay. So if you have a question like this, the first thing that you have to do is to wherever there is a whenever there is a right issue, then you have to find the right issue fraction. How do we get that? Is the SD share price? That is a share price before the right issue divided by the theoretical XY price. What is theoretical XY price? Is the price of the shares after the right issue. So this is how we calculate it. We have the existing shares at we are we are bringing five of our old shares for one new. So five times 3.8 will give us 19. And one at three will give us this one. So our theoretical XY price is calculated as 22 over six. What are we getting? Three point six seven. Okay. So sometimes if you are getting decimal, you can see that it's recurring, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So just leave it like this. It is recurring. Just write it to the lowest form. So maybe this will be eleven over three. So just write it to the lowest form, eleven over three. Don't approximate it. Then you count your right issue fraction. So your right issue fraction. The right issue fraction will be will be 3.8 divided by 11 over 3. So you can put it in the calculator straight forward, or you can do your board mass here, which will be, or your fraction, which will be uh, 3.8 times 3 over 11. Okay, 3.8 times 3, 3.8 times 3, 11.4. Okay, so we are having 11.4 divided by 11. This is our what? Our right issue fraction. So let's calculate the work now. Okay, so let's come to the existing shares. Okay, that will be January to December. Okay, the existing shares January to December. January to December, we'll be having what is the number of shares that they have? The existing shares. The shares in issue. The, the shares at the start of the year is 10 million. 10 million. Okay. So the 10 million, the, the bonus issue will be made on the 10 million, or the right issue will be made on the 10 million. So we have 10 million times 11.4 divided by 11 times 12 over 12. This year will be there for one year. So what are we getting? Ten point three six. Okay. 10.36, okay. 
you can see that it has increased by 0 0.36, isn't it? Yes. Okay. The 0 0.36 represents the what? The bonus issue. The bonus issue. Okay. Let's count to the full market value now, too. Okay. The full market value is 2 million, which was done on 1st March. That will be there for nine months. Okay. You see that the bonus issue, the bonus issue will be made on existing shares. So the full market value was there before the right issue. So the bonus issue also affect the full market value. So we have April, April to December. That will be 2 million multiplied by 11.4 divided by 11 times. Okay, let's find this one first before we do the nine. Let's find a portion that is representing the bonus issue. Okay, so before we pull rata, what is the bonus issue on it? Two times 11.4 divided by 11. Okay, 0 0.7. I'm having 0 0.7. It is 2.07. Okay, 0 0.7. 0 0.07. Okay. 0 0.07. Okay. And uh, this one is 0 0.36. I'm getting 2.07. Is that correct? No, but that, that will be full year. Yeah, yeah. So let's find the bonus issue first. You find the bonus issue first before you prove that. So if you are doing it full, that will be 2. It will be 2.07. It means that a bonus the bonus issue on it is two point is is the is the zero point zero seven before you now make it nine months. Okay. Okay. So you have the nine over twelve. So what are we going to be having now? One point five five. Okay. Okay. One point five five. Let's count to where when the right issue was made. The right issue was made on thirty first, I guess. That would be September to December. Okay. September to December. Okay. The the right issue fraction was what? One for five, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So that will be 1 over 5 times 12 million. Am I correct? Because it will be made on it will be made on the shares that were there before the what the right issue. So we have the 10 million and also the 2 million. Yes. Okay. What that will give us what? 1 over 5 times 12. I'm having 2.4. Okay. The 2.4, there was a bonus issue relating to the 0. Point, relating to the 2 million, 0 0.07, and also a bonus issue relating to that one as 0. 0.36. So we now multiply this one by the remaining. So the, if you, after subtracting this, the remaining figure will be the full market value, which will be time apportion from September to December. That will be four months. So four over 12. What are we getting? Then we now add all. I'll also show you another way of going about it. Okay. So minus 0 0.07 minus 0 0.36 okay. times four over 12. I'm being 0 0.66. Confirmed. Okay. So let's put all together. Twelve point five seven. Twelve point five seven. Can someone confirm that so that we move yes, on? Confirmed. Okay. Confirmed. Let's, 
let's look at the alternative one. Okay. The alternative one is you apply the bonus fraction up to the time of the bonus issue. So you have the first one. The existing shares will be there from January to March. So you do it one by one. The existing shares will be there from January to March. So it will be 10 million multiplied by 11 points because this, the bonus issue will affect this one by 11 times 3 over 12. You calculate this. Then you come to April to, to August. April to August, you'll be having 12 million. 12 million times 11.4 over 11 times April to August is how many months? Five months. Okay, five months. Five over 12. Then you now come to September to December. Your total shares will now be 12 million plus the right issue shares. And that will give you 12.4. 14.4 rather. Because we have gotten that one to be 2.4. So that will be 14.4. This 14.4, you just do 4 over 12 on it. Because the right the right issue will not, will not affect this one again. Because this is a day of the right issue. The right issue affects only the shares that were there before the right issue. So let's do it one by one and see. Let me do the last one. I'm having 14.4 times 4 over 12. I'm getting 4.8 for the last one. Okay. 12 million times 11.4 divided by 11 times 5 divided by 12. I'm getting 5.18. 5.18. Okay. Let's come to the last one. 3.45. 3.45. So let's put all together and see. Thirteen point four three. Thirteen point four three. That might be the approximation. Okay. Times times nine. Divided by 12, 1.55, okay, 0.4, minus 11. And then we have to do this, times 4, divided by 12. It's my real approximation, okay. No, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, there is a difference in some of the figures. Okay, so the, the first one is 2.41. Sorry, it's 2.41. The first one, I'm getting 2.59. Five, 5.9. It's 2.59. Okay, I'm getting for one. Let's see which one gives us the twelve point five seven. Okay, let's let me do it again. Eleven point four divided by eleven times three divided by twelve. And two point five nine. You can recheck and see. So recheck and see two point five nine. Let's go. It's two point five nine. Okay, let's now add. Right, 
point one two plus four point six. Twelve point five. Twelve point two five seven. Okay. So yeah. you just adopt the one that you like. Okay. So our earnings, our basic earnings per share now will just be the profit that they have, which is 3.5 million divided by the 12.57 shares. 12.57 million shares. So you just calculate your answer and do it in the highest denomination of the currency. 3.5 divided by 12.57 times 100. 27.84, 27.84 GP per share. Okay, they are asking us to do the, to restate last year's what, any per share. So 2020, any per share for 2020, basic any per share for 2020 will be calculated as the figure was given, the figure given to us was what? 33 pesos. 33 pesos. So it will be 33 GP. Then we now multiply it by what? This fraction. We turn it upside down. 11 over 11.4. What are we having? Thirty one point eight four. Okay. All right. Let's count to what we call diluted earnings per share. Okay. All right. Okay. So what we have done right now is called basic earnings per share. Okay. Diluted earnings per share. We currently have certain instruments which in the future might be converted into equity shares so if they are converted into equity shares they will increase the equity shares so it means that the equity shares that we are currently having will be different from the equity shares that we'll be having in the future so we are just trying to assume that assuming those cases should happen now what will be the impact of those issues on the current earnings per share so the company may be having a convertible what instrument which they are likely to be or they are likely to convert it to equity shares at a future date. So we are just saying that assuming this should be converted at a future date, what should have been the impact of that on the current earnings per share? Is it going to reduce the earnings per share? If it's going to reduce the earnings per share, then we say it is diluting the earnings per share. But if it is going to increase the earnings per share, then it means that that particular instrument is called anti-dilutive instrument. It means that it's going to increase the what the earnings per share. So it is not going to have any negative impact on the earnings per share. Okay, so we look at convertible instruments. We also look at share options, where the company has given share options to maybe the employees or the management that at the end of a future date, they should exercise it. The question now is, if they should exercise that particular share option, what would that happen? Share options are always given at a price lower than what the market value. So if the market value is 5 CD and the shares options will be exercised at 3 CD, it means that we are giving them a, we are giving them a bonus of 2 CD. So this particular 2 CD represents what? A bonus issue. This particular instrument represents a bonus issue. So if the shares to be exercised, what would have been the impact? The impact will be, will be on what? The bonus issue. We are going to be giving them a bonus issue of two CD on the shares. So for the share options, if the shares are going, if the options are going to be exercised at the same value, we don't do anything. There won't be anything because the options will be exercised at the future day. So when they are exercised, we turn it to what? Equity share, that is all. But we only take into consideration when the options will be exercised at a price lower than what the current market value. So it means that there is an issue of bonus issue there. So we try to factor in the bonus what shares 
that we are giving to them. So for the diluted earnings per share, we take into consideration only two items. The first one is the share option, and the second one is the what? The convertible instruments. The share option will not count with any what? Will not count with anything that is going to be increasing the profits. So the share options will always be a dilutive what instrument, no matter what, because they don't come with what, any additional what benefit. But if you look at a convertible instrument, the convertible instrument currently we are paying interest on it. If you are converting it to equity shares, it means that the interest will not be paid again. So we are going to be saving a part of what the interest. But you have to know that the interest is tax deductible. If you are not paying the interest again, it means that you will not be paying tax on the what? On the interest. So we look at after tax interest that we are saving. We do that, then we calculate our diluted earnings per share. So the diluted earnings per share is calculated as the current earnings, the current earnings plus any notional notional interest or notional profits okay divided by the current work current work plus any notional number of shares okay notional number of shares or something okay so if you have the share options the top will still be the current earnings but the down will be the what the, the current work plus the what the the options that we are giving to them for free. So let's just pick a question there. If you are doing it, we test the instrument one by one, especially the convertible instrument. We test them one by one to see whether they are dilutive. Some of them will be anti-dilutive. You exclude them from your calculation. Okay, so we don't have time. Let's pick a, let's, let's see, let's try and see. Let's try and see whether we can pick some two questions on the, <clears throat> let's look at the options. I have a question on options here. I have a question on options here. Yeah. I have a question on options here. So let me try. Okay, let's look at question five. I have question options there. On 1st October 20X3, Hoy had 2.5 million of equity shares of 50 pesos each in issue. No new shares were issued during the year and the 31st, 30, sorry, 30th September 20X4. But on that date, there were outstanding share options to purchase 2 million equity shares at 1 CD 20 pesos each. The average market value of Hoy's equity shares during the year was 3 CDs per share. Hoy's profits after tax in the year ended 30 of September 20X4 was 1,550,000. Mm -hmm. In accordance with IS33, earnings per share. Calculate the basic and diluted earnings per share. Okay. So are we giving the number of shares in the this question? Yes. No, we are giving value, not not number of shares. Oh, sorry, that's the value. So we just we have to find the number of shares ourselves. So let me look at the question first, question five. Okay, so question five. So question five, let's find the number of shares ourselves. So the number of shares will be calculated as what? The total value of the shares divided by the share price. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so the number of shares Number of shares will be calculated as two point five million 
غالب بائی زیرو پوائنٹ فائف اور آگے باس فائف میں نہیں Yeah. Give us five million shares. Okay. So the basic earnings per share, the only thing that is going to be affecting the basic earnings per share will be the will be the full market value, the bonus issue, the right issue. The basic earnings per share, we are talking about issues happening today. What are the issues that is going to be affecting the earnings per share today? Those issues to be a reality. So it will be Additional issue of shares, bonus issue, market value. But in this question, there was no what issue of additional shares. So our basic earnings per share will just be the profit, which is 1.5 million, 1.55 million divided by. So our basic earnings per share will be calculated as 155,000 divided by 5 million. So what are we having? I mean, that's one person. Is that correct? Yes, it's right. Okay. Yes. So let's come to the diluted earnings per share. So the diluted earnings per share, if there's options, nothing is going to happen to the profit. We still have the same profit, but we calculate the number of options, the shares that we are giving to the people for free. Okay. What's the current market price of the shares? What is the current market price of the shares? Is three cities, isn't it? Yeah. Is three cities, am I correct? Yes. Okay. But how much are they going to buy the option? 1.2. So 1 it, means, it means that there will be a bonus. There, there will be a bonus issue of how much? 1.8. 1.8. So this this one, this three million is is for the two million. So if you are giving, if you are buying at 1.2, it means that you are giving you a bonus of what? 1.8. What portion of this option is representing the 1.8? We do it the 1.8 divided by the market value multiplied by the 2 million. That would be the bonus, the bonus issue from the option. So let's calculate that and see. So the bonus issue or the bonus on the option will be 1.8 divided by three multiplied by the two million shares. So you just ask yourself, how much are they buying? What is the difference between the market value and that? So you just find, you just use that value over the market value multiplied by the option. Okay, so that will be 1.8 divided by three multiplied by two million. I'm having 1.2. Confirm? Confirm. Okay. Yes, sir. So our diluted earnings per share is now 1150 divided by 5000 plus 1200. So this is, the, this is the bonus issue, which is going to increase our number of shares. So our diluted earnings per share will now be calculated as 1550 divided by 6200. 25, 25 pesos. Okay. Yeah. You can see our, our basic energy share has reduced by what? Six pesos, isn't it? Yeah. So the option has diluted our current earnings per share by what? Six pesos. So the options will always dilute the, what, the earnings per share. Let's look at convertible instruments. 
let's look at how we go about a convertible instrument. Okay, let me see. Let's pick two questions on the convertible instrument in them. Let's see. The time, the time is just, it's not enough. If I want to pick a, a question for it, question 15. The Lynx has 12 million ordinary shares and 4 million 5% convertible bonds in issue as at 31st December 2002. There have been no new issues of shares or bonds for several years. The bonds are convertible into ordinary shares in 2003 or 2004 at the following rates. At 30 shares for every 100 cities of bond, if converted at 31st December 20, 2003, and then at 25 shares for every 100 of shares, if converted at 31st December 2004. There are outstanding share options on 400,000 shares, which can be exercised at a future date at an exercise price of 25 cities per share. The average market price of the shares in the links during 2003 was 40 cities. Total earnings for the year to 31st of 2003 were 36 million. Taxes payable at a rate of 30% on profit. Compute basic earnings per share and diluted earnings per share for 31st, sorry, for the year ended 31st December 2003. Okay. Sometimes they will give you, they will give you uh, months. So you have to time a portion everything. So this one, mostly they will not give you months. They will just give you the thing like the thing is existing for a year. So we do it as if it's a full year. So sometimes they can, so the the convertible and the options will be a dilute uh, a dilutive instrument. So what we do is that we calculate our basic earnings per share. Mostly they are asking you to calculate your your basic earnings per share and the dilutive. The basic will always be maybe it will not be that hard for you. Uh, the issue will be about the diluted earnings per share. So let's look at question fifteen. So our basic earnings per share will be equal to the earnings, that is 36 million. So the earnings is 36 million and the number of shares is 12 million. So we have, there is no bonus issue, there is no new issue, there is no right issue. So 36 million over 12 million. And that will give us three CD per share. That is very simple. Okay. If you count to the dilutive, the, dilu the diluted earnings per share, what we do now is that we look at the convertible instruments and the share options. Okay. As, as, a rational, as a rational convertible holder, which of these options are you going to be picking? Will you convert in 2023 or 2024? Two thousand and three. Okay, so what you do is that you always pick the the one with the highest what with the with the highest conversion rate, which is thirty. Okay, what is the value of the shares that they have? What is the value of the convertible instrument that they have? What is the value now? Forty cities. Is it forty million? Or is four million? The total value is for four is four million, isn't it? Four million. Okay. And they are saying that we are going to be giving you 30 for every hundred, isn't it? Yes. 30 for every hundred. Okay. 30 for every hundred. How do we go about it? 30 for every hundred. So 30 is equal to 100. So what will be equal to 4 million? 1.2. Okay, 1 1.3. All right. So what we do now is we look at a conversion. Okay, the conversion will be two, three. So what we do is we do our four million, our four million divided by 100 times 30. Okay, 
that will give us 1.2, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So 4 divided by 100 times 30. So we have 1.2 million. That is the number of ordinary shares we'll be having. Okay. So this is the shares that we'll be getting if we convert. Let's count to the interest that we are paying on the convertible instrument every year. What is the interest? The interest will always be the coupon. The interest will always be the coupon, which is four percent on the which is five percent on the four million. So we are paying interest of five percent on the four million every year. So let's calculate the interest there. So that will be zero point zero five multiplied by four million. How much are we getting? Two hundred thousand. Okay. So two hundred thousand. So that will be zero point two million. Okay. This is the interest that we are paying every year, isn't it? Okay. This particular interest, the tax authority is allowing us to what to subtract it from what from profits. This particular interest is tax deductible. They will allow you to subtract it from your profit before they charge interest. Now you are converting the instrument. It means that you will not be enjoying or they will not be allowing you to subtract this particular what figure from profit again. It means that you will not be paying what a tax on this amount. So you'll be paying tax of what 30% on it. Okay. Because it will not it will not be part of the profit before the tax. So it will, you'll be paying tax of 30% on that. So the interest we always find after tax interest. After tax interest. So after tax interest, we always find after tax interest, which is calculated as one minus T multiplied by the interest. The one minus T, the T is the tax rate. So that will give you one minus 0 0.3 times 0 0.2 million. So what will be after tax rate? 0 0.7 times 0 0.2 million. What are we getting? Zero point one four. Okay, zero point one four million. Okay, I'm sure the tax rate is thirty percent. Okay, so that will be zero point one four. So what we do is that we test to see whether this particular instrument is dilutive. So we try to find the any per share on this particular amount. So we do. 0 0.14, which is the interest over the shares that we are getting from this particular instrument. So we do 0 0.14 million divided by 1.2 million. What are we getting? If we get a figure which is lower than the current earnings per share, then it means that this particular instrument is diluted. So I'm getting 0 0.11. 0 0.11. Okay, or 0 0.12. 0.12. Okay. So you can see that this is lower than the what? The current any special, which is 3 CD. So it means that this particular instrument is diluted. So we include it in the diluted any special. But you can also have a situation where you calculate it, you'll be having your, your, your figure should be 3.5. It means that it is higher than what? The current any special. So this particular instrument will be anti diluted. So we exclude it. From the calculation. All right. So what we do now is let's ca let's calculate the bonus option. The bonus option that we are going to be given. What is the market value of the shares? The current market value of the shares is what? It's 40, but they are going to be buying the options at what 25. There will be there is a bonus of 15. So we have 15 over 40 multiplied by the number of options that they have there, which is 400. So the number of options is 400. So we'll be having 400,000. What will be the option? It 
15 over 40 times 400. I'm getting 150,000. 150, yeah. So the, the option is what? 150,000. So our diluted earnings per share now will be calculated like this. The current profit, which is 36 million, plus the interest savings. This particular interest, we are not going to be paying to the people as interest again. We will now be retaining it as profit and we'll be paying 30% profit on it. So 70% will be what? Will be retained. So we add it 0 0.14 million. And that is the that is the notional interest that I'm talking about. Divided by the current shares, which is 12 million, plus the new conversion, which is 1.2 million, which is a notional shares, plus the share options, which is the share option is the share option will be 0 0.15. Okay. 0 0.15 million. So 0 0.15 million. So we are going to be having 36.14 million divided by okay, 12. 12 plus 1.2 plus 0 0.15. I'm having 13.35 million. So what are we getting? Two point seven zero seven. Okay, two point zero. Seven zero. Okay, let's make it two point seven one. Seven one. Okay. What can you see? Com comparing these to. Compare these to our previous any per share, our current any per share. You can see that this, the previous any, the current any per share has reduced. It was first what three million. Now it is now what. 2.71. Okay, so this is now telling us that if the instrument should be converted and the options to be exercised, it is going to reduce our current earnings per share to 2.71. So that is what the diluted we are just talking about. These conditions that are currently existing, if they should be exercised now or in the future, what would, that, what would be the impact of what? What would be the impact or on our current earnings per share. So we just try to what, assume that those particular conditions are going to be what, manifesting at a future date. So we just try to what, to estimate their impact on the current earnings per share in the current year. That is, that is the only thing about a diluted earnings per share. That is the only thing about a diluted earnings per share. For the any special, the the part that is that is very easy, that is the easiest, is the diluted any special, is the share options and also the convertible instrument. The difficult part is the end, the basic any special, the right issue, the bonus issue, the full market value, where they are going to be doing all at once. They will do some of them all at once in the question, and that is going to be giving you a tough time. That is going to be giving you a tough time. All right. So, Sinyanik, I've given you the listing already. I've given you the rapport already. Uh, question what? Question, no. Uh, okay. Question. Okay. Those who are doing FR, your one is the question, nine. Right? Those who are doing CR, your one is, your one is the question, eight. Okay. So, those who are here that... We, we are going to be doing mock. That will be pre-mock on Saturday. Yes, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So if you want to join, I will still put it on the platform. If you want to join, you can just WhatsApp me. And if you are here, you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so that we can grow the channel together. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. All right. All right. Thank you, Sines. I'll see you guys. Share the link. Share the link. Share the link. <laughs> Okay. So seniors, I I will see you. I'll see you guys maybe hopefully tomorrow. All right. Hello, I didn't take that.
Yeah, I said I'll I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow.